I'm talking to actor Frankie Faison. How are you today, sir? I'm very well. I'm happy to be here talking with you. Thank you for having me. Before we get into the film, I wanted to go back a little bit and ask you if you can remember what your first job in the movie industry was. Yes, I can. What? <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a little known film that was a very small film that probably didn't get uh, very much exposure. Um, I re remember playing a very small part that eventually got written out of the script. So it's like, I mean, out of the film. So it's, uh, it's, um, it's non-memorable, but <laughs> so I can't even remember the name of the film at this moment, senior moment. But uh, yeah, I mean, I guess the first thing that I did of prominence was, uh, was um, a film called Exterminator 2, <laughs> which is one of those action flamethrower vigilante kind of films. And uh, from then I just started doing stuff. So, and I have a theater background. So I did a lot of theater before I even got into film. And that's the, uh, that's the thing that uh, has given me my backbone, given me my stamina and everything else. I, I, I still love theater, still love to do it whenever I can. And this film that I'm, we were gonna talk about today has a lot of theater, theatricality about it, which, uh, which I enjoyed and embraced and it allowed me to get to the place that I needed to get to in developing this character. Uh, before we talk about the role, we're going to talk about the killing of Kenneth Chamberlain, the movie that you portrayed, Kenneth Chamberlain Sr. Um, before, the, before we talk about the role itself, were you aware of the events that transpired that night? Nothing. Uh, when I was, I was presented the script and um, I liked the story and I thought it was great. And then I found out that it was based on a real person and... Uh, I, I said, okay, that's, but everything that I got, I mean, was basically from what I, I liked the script and I liked the character and I wanted to be involved in the project. In preparing for the project, did you listen to any of the recordings from that night? And did you get to meet any of the individuals that were there? They both were available to me, but I chose not to because I didn't want to be influenced I wanted this to be intrinsic and as organic as it could possibly be. And I wanted to be able to trust, and I did trust my writer and my director. And, uh, and, wanted, and then we would see what would come out of it because I didn't want to do a, like a documentary. I wanted to do a, a film, a story, the narrative, you know, and that's what, uh, and so I didn't, I, I shied away from, hearing or meeting or talking to anyone until after the film was over. Now the director, he spoke to the family and he did all the reading up on the documents, you know, and had that material. But I came in, and I wanted to come in as an actor playing a role in a very profound film or story that was important. Yeah, the story is, is, is troubling on so many different levels. Um, I understand that you kind of prepared for it in a different manner, but was it hard to play the part and separate reality versus you're playing a part? You mean the reality of what transpired versus and real life events that could have, you know, influence how you feel? No, because I, I mean, I was committed to playing the role as it was written and putting on, but down on the page and uh, for the time that I was there working on it, I was a 100% committed and obligated to Kenneth Chamberlain, his story, his character, who he is and who he was. And so therefore it was very, very physically, mentally and emotionally exhausting because I had to stay in the body of this man, of who he was. And that was tough, especially when you consider what he went through in this last couple of hours of his life. Yeah, it was the most challenging uh, thing that I've ever done, beginning to middle to end, 
in film to this day. The film is a lot of just you in an apartment, right? And it's a lot of dialogue and a lot of, uh, of, of how it unfolds. Kind of take me behind that shooting it in a real time versus maybe something that you've done before. Was there a lot of difference there? Was it harder? And I know you said that was probably the hardest role you've done to date, but kind of take me behind that a little bit. Well, it was, like I said, the film, the process was, I came in and shot eight days and I played mostly to the door and to what's on the other side of the door. Someone would be reading lines, uh, you know, an assistant or somebody in, I had to react and respond to those things. And there was a knock or a noise someone would make it and I had to respond to that. And then after my eight days, the next eight days, they brought the people in on the other side of the door. So the only time I had any true interaction with the other actors or performers was at the end of the film when they finally burst through the door. So it was, um, it was, it was, it was, it was amazing because I had to trust and deal with the sounds of Kenneth Chamberlain in my head and what he was going through. And that's why I think a lot of the power of this film is in we're, we're doing an examination of a man who has his last couple of hours of his life, who was killed by law enforcement. Usually we don't get that story. We get the story of, the victims as they are shot down or choked to death or murdered. But this was an examination from his perspective of what he was here. And man, it's very, it's very powerful to, 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 to digest. And, and I know it is for his family, for the family and the friends who are left behind. So I wanted to tell that story and that's why it was so exhausting for me to do. Even to talk about it now, it, it, it summons up emotions that, um, I, that make me feel hurt and betrayed by something that was supposed to be there, put in place to help us, to defend us. I mean, the medical alert system, you wear it, you wear it for, for help. When you're in distress, it goes off. And this brought these renegade police officers and uh, to the scene where they were combated with no understanding of what this person on the other side of the door was going through. It was just a bulldozer, so to speak. And um, I thought that that needed to, that story needs to be told. It's it's the stories like this that aren't brought to life that are the more scarier ones than we see in front of our eyes, correct? Yes, I agree with that. Because those you see and you get to witness, but these, you know, I mean, you know, I mean, this whole family, their suffering, you know, is, is undocumented, really. I mean, you know, there's little bits and pieces here and there, but you, you, you don't know. And that's, um, and that's a shame because it's, uh, not only should it not be happening, but when it is, does happen, these people should be brought to some sort of accountability and they, their faces should be shown. You should see these people because they walk among, among us and we should know who they are. It's shameful. It is very shameful. And um, it's, 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 I feel for any family who's ever lost anyone in such an unnecessary, tragic way. For me, it's this is one of the most powerful pieces of film that I've seen in recent time. And, and your performance it blows me away just watching it. What is one thing that you hope people take away from watching this film? I hope that they can see the humanity in Kenneth Chamberlain. I hope that they can see the fear. I hope that they can see the desperation in this man who's just trying to live his life as so many of us do. That's what we do. We want to be able to come home, enjoy our homes, watch television, enjoy a nice meal, 
to do those things, to communicate with their family. And all this was taken away from him. So I want the audience to see that, that you know, he wasn't a hero. He's not a superhero or anything else. He's an ex-Marine, for goodness sake, who fought for this country. You know, he is a man with, a, with some health issues and some mental issues. And there should be sympathy and understanding for him, but there wasn't. So I want to bring that out into the light so people can see the humanness of Kenneth Chamberlain and know so that he would not have died in vain, that, you know, that his death can be meaningful in some way and it can bring attention to other families and to other people who may suffer from the same or similar situations. And that would make me happy, you know, that would make me happy. So you've done well over a hundred plus films, uh, whether it's films, TV shows, stage pro productions, what keeps you going? Um, my search to, to explore the human condition. You know, I, I, love, I love writers. I love what they write. I love to be in the mix and being able to tell their story. And they write amazing characters. Every character that I play, I learn from. And uh, one of the lessons I learned from every character I play pretty much, I'm an actor who believes that if the character's not in you, it's kind of hard for you to play him. He's there somewhere. I mean, some aspect of him is in you. And I love being able to explore those aspects of myself in a safe environment. And that's what acting affords me. So that's, that's where I am with that. I love that. Um, I, I, Frankie, I, I just want to thank you for your time today. It's, uh, it's been a pleasure talking to you. I've been a big fan all the way dating back to your wire days. I was a huge fan of the show. So I really just want to greatly appreciate your time today, sir. Thank you. And thank you for helping to get this fan film out there and be seen by people so that they can, so that they can make a, their own judgment about what they see, you know, and how they want to respond to it. So thank you for that.